you know, both teams played over the weekend, and uh, coaches are always scrambling because you don't have a lot of information about them in, in basically two days of practice. So it's uh, knowing about them and obviously a, a potential letdown after you know, beating a team like Notre Dame. So uh, we're trying to get our guys to understand who they are, that this is uh, you know, a great game for Binghamton to come here and, and really show their stuff and, and play well. Then well, we know they're going to be emotionally very high and we try to have to uh, match that intensity and play well ourselves. Is there a sigh of relief, uh, easier breathing, that, that it's not a top 10 opponent? Because this has been so many in a row for you guys. Yeah, we, we've played the schedule. Uh, I think we looked the other day and we uh, have the number one strength schedule in the country. Uh, we're number two in the RPI right now, which is, is great because those are the top two criteria for uh, the NCAA. So to have one and two is good. It's, it's good for our confidence. We have a lot of lacrosse yet to play. And uh, this is, I think, our first week where we're playing uh, three games in you know, seven, eight days. So we, we're doing our best to try to get ready for Binghamton, and, and we know we've got another one lurking down the road here. Talk about your goalie rotation, and we were talking to Bobby. He, he said he actually likes playing the second half. So I, I don't know if you have any thoughts of, of switching it around or if you think that both these guys have gotten used to that it, role. It's really the song remains the same. Uh, we've, we've played two goalies as much as we felt comfortable doing it this year. And uh, even a game like Notre Dame, where it's such a big game for us, uh, decided to put Bob in the second half just based on how he was practicing. And even coming off the Duke loss, he played in the second half. And I thought it was uh, one of the things that we did well in that game was our goalie play in the second half. So a lot of confidence in him. He's been playing well right along, and he, he showed it in the second half uh, against Notre Dame. I think Scott Nelson is done with Binghamton. It's a you know, they seem like they're coming a little bit. Their last five games have been one goal or two goals, right. so they're right there. Yeah, you look at it. Everybody they've played, uh, especially recently, has been, uh, uh, you know, they've been very competitive and had a chance to win those games, did win one or two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Cornell got off to a great start, but they had a better second half against Cornell. It looks like they've gone, changed defensively somewhat, going from some man-to-man to, -man to looks like more zone right now, and that, that tends to slow people down. And, uh, you know, they've been competing in the face-off, so uh, we'll see. We'll see tomorrow night. John, can you talk a little bit about the decision to use McDermott more in the second half and kind of what he offers you guys on defense? He's a pretty good position player. Uh, he's pretty solid in the, in the package. He's just lacking a, a little bit of game experience, and uh, he's been getting in in spots in, in different games this year. I think he's getting, getting better and better. He's, he's a smart player, and that's what we needed in the second half of that game. I think we had made some mental errors, and uh, Matty didn't match up with uh, Doyle very well in, in the first half. So we're just looking for somebody to come in and play a little better position and try to slow him down from going to the goal. Was there a reason he was a better matchup uh, versus that guy, or is just Matt didn't have a great day? I don't think Matt had a great day, and I, I think one of the things Matt was trying to do is really help our team defense. He's communicating really well. He was sliding, uh, got one when he was about to slide, and, and he came around from the back of the goal and scored. And I just think we, you know, we were asking a lot of them to, you know, in that package, we just need to get them out and settle them down. And what McDermott did was he played, you know, good position against them, and he and he helped well in our in our team defense. And uh, you know, I think Matt just got excited, got to him a couple couple times in the first half, and I think that affected him emotionally. Uh, so Jay was, uh, you know, a little bit more of a calming force coming into the game in the second half. Coach Peter McCartney was a revelation on Saturday yeah. on the wing. Uh, what was he doing so well that, that got all those ground balls and caused turnovers? Well, we were really excited in the fall when we saw the depth in our poll, which I'd talked about right along, you know, uh, Harris and McCartney and Furman and uh, Nico Manning from uh, Baldwinsville slash OCC. They had all played pretty well, and they were all very aggressive. And when we were working so hard on our faceoffs in the fall, they were really a, a bright spot. And then the season started, and we weren't getting the same – play that we did in the fall from our guys as far as really being aggressive, going after the loose balls, uh, checking the, the ball out of sticks from the opposing team's players. And in this game, it's, you know, we saw what we saw in the fall, and, you know, so Scooney getting out there, uh, you know, Peter and, and Scott you know, Furman being a freshman, playing very well uh, in the games that he's played uh, recently with Harris going down to close defense and him, him getting, a, Scott getting an extra opportunity as, as the second pole. Uh, so we're, you know, we just, we loved what we saw. We, we've been waiting for that and we're hoping we can continue that.